ಶಂಕರಾಚಾರ್ಯಮಧ್ಯಮಾಚಾರ್ಯಪರ್ಯಂತಂ ವಂದೇ ಗುರುಪರಂಪರಾಹನಾವತು ಸಹ ನೌಭುನಕ್ತು ಸಹ ವೀರ್ಚಂಕರವಾಬಹೈ ತೇಜಸ್ವಿ ನಾವಧೀತಮಸ್ತು ಮಾವಿಷಾವಹೈ ಶಾಂತಿ 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 ಓಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ವರುಣೇಂದ್ರರುದ್ರಮರುತ ಸ್ತುನ್ವಂತಿ ದಿವ್ಯೈಸ್ತವೈ ವೇದೈಸ್ಸಾಂಗಪದಕ್ರಮೋಪನಿಷದೈ ಗಾಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಸಾಮಗಾಧ್ಯಾನಾವಸ್ಥಿತ ತದ್ಗತೇನ ಮನಸ ಪಶ್ಯಂತಿ ಎಂ ಯೋಗಿನ ಯಾಂತನ್ನ ವಿದುಸುರಾಸುರಗಣ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ದೇವಾಯ ತಸ್ಮೈ ನಮಃ ಫಿಫ್ಟಿ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸರ್ವಕರ್ಮಿ ಕುರ್ವಾಣೋ ಮಧ್ಯಪಾಶ್ರಯ ಕುರ್ವಾಣೋ ಮಧ್ಯಪಾಶ್ರಯ ಮತ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದಿ ಮತ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದಿ ಶಾಶ್ವತ ಪದಮ್ಯಯ ಚೇತಸಾಕರ್ಮಿ ಚೇತಸಾಕರ್ಮಿ ಮಯಿ ಸನ್ಯಸ್ಯ ಮತ್ಪರ ಮಯಿ ಸನ್ಯಸ್ಯ ಮತ್ಪರ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿಯೋಗಮುಪಾಶ್ರಿತ್ಯ ಮಚ್ಚಿತ್ತಸಿ ಮತ್ ಪ್ರಸಾದಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಅಥ ಚೇತ್ವಹಂಕಾರ ಅಥ ಚೇತ್ವಹಂಕಾರ ನೋಷ್ಯಸಿ ವಿನಕ್ಷ್ಯಸಿ ನಶ್ರೋಷ್ಯಸಿ ಸಾರಿ ನಶ್ರೋಷ್ಯಸಿ ವಿನಕ್ಷ್ಯಸ್ತಿ ವಿನಕ್ಷ್ಯಸಿ ಯದಹಂಕಾರಮಾಶ್ರಿತ್ಯ ಯದಹಂಕಾರಮಾಶ್ರಿತ್ಯ ನೋತ್ಸ್ಯತಿ ಮನ್ಯಸೆ ನೋತ್ಸ್ಯತಿ ಮನ್ಯಸೆ ಮಿಥ್ಯೈಷವ್ಯವಸಾಯಸ್ತೆ ಮಿಥ್ಯೈಷವ್ಯವಸಾಯಸ್ತೆ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಸ್ವಾಕ್ಷ್ಯತಿ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿಸ್ವಾಕ್ಷ್ಯತಿ ಸ್ವಭಾವಜೇನ ಕೌಂತೇಯ ಸ್ವಭಾವಜೇನ ಕೌಂತೇಯ ನಿಬ್ಧಸ್ವೇನ ಕರ್ಮಣ ನಿಬ್ಧಸ್ವೇನ ಕರ್ಮಣ ಕರ್ತು ನೇಚ್ಛಸಿ ಯನ್ಮೋಹಾತ್ ಕರಿಷ್ಯಸ್ತ್ಯವಶೋಪಿತ್ಯವಶೋಪಿತ್ಯ 
ईश्वर सर्वूतानाजुन ृदेशेर्जुन भ्रामयन भ्रामयन यंत्रारूढ़ा मयया शरण गच्छ तमे शरण गच्छ भारत भारत प्राप्स्यसि शाश्वतम प्राप्स्यसि शाश्वतम इति ते इति ते ज्ञानमाख्यातम So till sixty-two, Karma Yoga was summarized. Uh, Mahodaya, you had to give the translation for sixty-two. Last oh, time 60. we did, I mean, we didn't do. Oh. Okay, let's do that. Sixty-two translation of number sixty-two. Tameva Sharanam Gacche. Surrender to Him alone. with your whole heart bharata by his grace you will gain absolute peace Pama, the eternal abode the eternal abode surrender to him alone with your whole heart bharata full stop by his grace you will gain absolute peace the eternal abode <clears throat> Guruji, this is moksha palam only. Right? Huh? What moksha, is it? Moksha palam only. This one, moksha. Yeah, yeah. So now, what he's going to do is, is. See what happened. Summary: This eighteenth chapter is upasamhara. Correct. Upasamhara means summary. And so, as we've seen, he's been summarizing karma yoga and jnana yoga. These are the two main topics of uh, Bhagavad Gita. So, if you see uh, number four, four, four to twelve karma yoga summarized. Okay, then. Again, forty-one to forty-nine karma yoga summarized. Yeah, Brahmana Chatri Visham onwards to forty-nine, which is Asakta Buddhist Sarvatra karma yoga was summarized. Again, from fifty-six to sixty-two, karma yoga summarized three times. It's slightly different. Uh, Emphasis. First time it was uh, 
okay triggered by arjuna's question arjuna's question was what sanyasa and tyaga these are the two words i want to know about he said so krishna took that opportunity to refer to karma yoga as tyaga tyaga because karma yoga involves a lot of tyaga and so sattvika sanyasa also he uses the word there he doesn't call it as jnana he doesn't say sanyasa is jnana here because i think krish uh, arjuna appropriate for him is karma yoga he is not ready for jnana yet and so there that was the emphasis and then 41 to 49 swadharma paksham was there brahmana kshatriya visha what should i do on a daily basis what should be my duty swadharma so swadharma paksham that was emphasized there then 56 to 62 so that from mat prasadat onwards no mat prasadat is there three or four times it appears and so there that bhakti ishwararpana buddhi and prasada buddhi highlighted so bhakti you can say there then jnana yoga also two times 13 onwards panchayita ni mahabaho from there till 17 yasya na hankrito bhavah till there you got the jnana yoga talked about then 50 to 55 siddhim prapto yada from there to 55 bhaktya mam abhijana tatvatah jnatva vishes vishate tadanantara tatvatah jnatva so jnana yoga so three times karma yoga two times jnana yoga summarized and now so he is saying now iti te jnanam akhyatam akhyatam kathitam proktam so i have i've taught you jnanam akhyatam i taught you the jnanam which is the which is what you originally asked for also he didn't quite say jnanam shishyaste ham shaditvam mam tvam prapannam he say he did not use the word jnanam i don't think so and so that jnanam iti iti means what iti te thus the knowledge was taught to you so thus refers to what iti iti refers to 2.11 2.11 i think that is the first shloka first teaching shloka teaching words of bhagavad shri krishna all the way up to the previous shloka 62 tameva sharanam gach that is the meaning of iti it is in this manner in this manner to you te jnanam akhyatam <clears throat> jnanam so this jnanam is so imam vivasvate yogam etc so same jnanam was talked about therefore whatever i told you is whatever is there in the veda only veda is nityam shashvatam therefore even though this is outside the veda we are, we are this these shlokas are outside the veda still it is veda sara only and uh, that's why we say iti shrimad bhagavad gita su upanishad su brahma vidyayam yoga shastre so it is presenting us in a more elaborate manner upanishad we studied we studied kata upanishad without the bhashyam if we had studied see the kata upanishad took us probably 2 years i am guessing about 2 years and so without the bhashyam if we had studied it would have taken us less than a year less than a year and okay i uh, we won't because that much detail we go, won't go it uh, but but bhagavad gita without bhashyam we are studying that itself is taking us a long time okay 5 6 years it's taking so still it says elaborate so prashad is the small means then bhagavad gita is much bigger more elaborate karma yoga and all he'll very elaborate and so 
still it is veda saraha only it is an essence of the veda if you studied if you are thorough with bhagavad gita then you can confidently say i know the essence of the veda i know the purpose of the veda karma kanda portions not studied there is lot i don't know okay but purpose of the karma kanda is jnana kanda and jnana kanda what is the goal i know very clearly karma kanda also in a way i know purpose of karma kanda i know i may not know all the detail elaborate rituals it talks about but in terms of puja etc i know everything i know the purpose all right iti te jnanam akhyatam and guhyat uh, guhyataram this also this also is very familiar to us because guhyam we saw raja vidya raja guhyam there was a chapter also called there chapter itself was called like that there itself he starts like that idam tu te shri bhagavan uvacha idam tu te guhyatamam pravaksham yanasu yave this comes in the 11th chapter 9th chapter i'm sorry 9th 9th chapter so they are guhyatamam jnanam vijnana sahitam yajnatva mokshase ashubhat and next line also raja vidya raja guhyam pavitram idam uttamam ninth chapter so guhyam there krishna refers to this teaching this jnanam as guhyam and why is it guhyam guhyam means go goptam goptam means secret ununderstandable but why 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 difficult to comprehend if you say ununderstandable what we are talking about ununderstandable stuff right now we will wasted 6 years of uh, talking about non understandable stuff paranchikani hey come on we are all intelligent beings there no doubt about that okay how do you know there's no doubt if we have a doubt at least shankara says that pashubin narana what is the difference so ahara nidra bhayam everything is same bhayam also is there animals have fear we also have fear hunger every time hunger at least an animal will keep looking for it if it doesn't find it it won't complain but we will complain complaining is our unique uniqueness but anyway shankara doesn't talk about that he says buddhir hi tesham adhiko visheshah or dharmo hi tesham adhiko visheshah therefore no doubt that we have a, a faculty which which is makes us unique okay but then here is a problem paranchika ni katopanishad <clears throat> but all the sense organs in the mind that is given to us it's meant for us to know everything in this universe in fact entire universe we can know the process is going on they are figuring out so much and new newer and newer laws are coming up limitations of previous newtonian laws now we are figuring figured out and everything we know it's all about anatma it nothing about the self because paranchi kani means what paranchi means outward focused kani means indriyani paranchi therefore that is why it is a secret not because brahmins hid the this shastra great game they played on us brahmins hid the secret and they, and then they sanskrit sanskrit is a what do you call this this guy from columbia university sheldon pollock says brahmin brahmins used sanskrit to oppress the rest of the indians can you believe the theories they develop they are fantastic in concocting theories hey there is no need for any brahmin to come into the picture at all thanks to brahmins there is a little bit we we have here that we can talk about and so that is why paranchikani that is why it is guhya to guhya taram greater than the greatest secret okay that's the beauty of this one maya maya that kind of teaching jnana maya prokta maya uh maya akhyatam by told my me is writing it in passive voice in response to your shishyaste ham shadi mam tvam prapannam i told you this which arjuna may not have expected also and but arjuna was responsive he was asking questions and so forth so he was making an attempt to understand uh, he was pretty serious 
dinner was serious no doubt about that now he says vimrushya etad asheshena vimrushya shankaracharya says vimarshanam krutva vimarshan karke vimarshanam means what alochanam krutva shankaracharya says that also alochanam okay think about what i said i said a lot of things and i don't expect you to have grasped every word and every shloka in all its purport so you have to think about it alochanam krutva vimrushya etad etad what does shankara say about etad yatho uktam shastram the shastram which i have told you yatha uktam as i have told you shastram not as you might have heard before and all that no no you give up all the stuff you heard about as i told you as i as you heard me talk yathoktam shastram and uh, start and then of course then karma yoga jnana yoga main topics for arjuna he said jayasi chet karma naste mata buddhir janardana tad ekam vada nischitya tell me just between this karma and jnanam tell me just one and nowhere nowhere krishna gives a categorical answer nowhere he may have hinted he may have hinted here and there but he he combined both and said these are the things that are available for a human being and but he asked ekam instead uh, krishna went off to ekam eva advitiyam so that kind of ekam he went off instead of saying one of these two ubayoho ekam that's what arjuna asked for among the two tell me one and that means what swami says that means what hey you can't you you are gifted with a buddhi a human mind is given a buddhi so try, trying to spoon feed spoon feeding is not correct you are, give the data present all the data to the person let the person assimilate it and then make up their own mind decide that is the best way for a, for any human being to grow up and make the, their own decisions so that they will be responsible for the decisions otherwise if every all decisions are made by somebody else then the growth doesn't happen growth doesn't happen at all constantly depending on somebody else so that is swami ji says healthy teaching proper teaching is that which makes the student independent of the teacher okay healthy teaching is that you don't be able to say i know what the teacher knows and that is over then there is no more nothing left that's why asheshena look at that asheshena he says means eta dasheshena vibhutya look at all the points i said don't don't take anything for granted because jnanam is easy jnanam you can get the minute you get it then it's over the game is over but a lot of things are there karma yoga is a big thing don't don't amanitam adambitam 20 values i talked to you about just make a make an assessment come back to it and then assess yourself because where is the question of uh, rushing through this what will i do rush i've been rushing through it for so many janmas and now uh, what do i gain by rushing through this nothing in fact i am the goal really so there is no rushing in fact not rushing is what i understand from the shastram and so i am finally the purpose of this life itself is going to be fulfilled there is no rush there is no rush one more janma if we have to take let us take one more janma not that we want that but there is no question of rushing and it cannot be rushed also and so Because finally, uh, is, I, this, is this Nididhyasana we are talking about here? Vimru Taita Sheshana? No, no, not necessarily. No, no, not Nididhyasana. We've talked about that the whole the Bhagavad Gita summary is over. He's not talking about anything. He's only saying, think about what I've told you. Ravrishya. Alochanam. Alochanam Kuru. So there's some karma and jnana is there. What is appropriate for me? can i do both at the same time 
have I grown out of karma? Or now do I need to really do karma with a different attitude now? With now a different attitude now. Oh my God, is Swakarmanatam Abhyarchya, he said. Hey, I've never done Swakarmanatam Abhyarchya before. I was just caught up in whatever I did. So that means I have a lot to do here. I have a lot of homework to do. Really a lot. And so, there is no jumping forward here. And so, that is one reason. One reason is you don't tell the person, this is how, this is what you should do now. It's not correct. Give the data. Somebody visited yesterday and so it might be raining and so they, they are they going to take an auto or taxi? Where are they going? Are they going two kilometers or ten kilometers? And last one week it's been raining cats and dogs here. And so you put all the data together. And then the person makes up their mind what they want to do. Like that. That's one thing. Second thing, the same advice doesn't up. Same symptoms do not deserve the same advice. Same symptoms. You go to the doctor, you tell these symptoms. The other person also talks about the same symptoms. Headache, headache. Headache, headache. Doctor has to, the, the real doctor will not, will ask questions. Because the two, two headaches may not be caused by the same, same factors. Many factors are there for come. Migraine headache caused by some some types of foods caused by some other uh, some other factors will be there. Here, migraine headache caused by the spouse. Finally, after a lot of talking, spouse is what caused migraine headache. So two different things are there. Now the doctor has to decide what to do. The spouse solution is different. This one requires a different approach. Maybe same medicine, finally. For now, the same medicine. But the doctor has to think, oh my God, this is a different problem. This is a different problem. So, therefore, alochana kritva. You you decide for yourself because you, this is not a, this is not something where you, we are supposed. Okay, so now I think that point was made. So consider this thoroughly, properly, and you. It, it, I already have given you, hinted you what's best for you and all that. But still, you have to decide what's good for you, what's right for you, and therefore Krishna says yatha ichasi tatha kuru. These are simple Sanskrit it is. Yatha ichasi tatha kuru. Means whatever you feel is right. Yatha ichasi tatha kuru. This is a this is a blank check, you know. Blank check it is. Yatha ichasi tatha kuru. Sometimes in our class here, every day we, we chant and we discuss with Swamiji. And Swamiji, shall we chant Ghanam today? Ghanapata. And then Swamiji will say, Yatha Ichasi Tata Kuru. Whatever you say, only we will do. <laughs> That's what is typical answer it is. <laughs> Yatha Ichasi Tata Kuru. And then we have to say, oh, okay. He puts a ball in our court. And so, giving independence. Giving independence to the person who has been taught. And uh, that's a good, uh, good model to follow for everybody. Teachers, parents. Teachers who are not parents may struggle with this. Okay? May struggle with it. Because parenting is good. That way, parenting is a very important need. It's a requirement, I think. All human beings must be parents. Because that whole chemistry is entirely different. That the struggle, joys and struggle both go together, together, together. And then Vedanta makes sense. Otherwise, you come and sit here, everything feels new. And it's all, hey, cash, it's a, you know, I don't know. They'll say this is all too much and all that. The thing is too much. Just a recap of the entire life is what it is. So anyway, that is what it is. Yatha ichasi tatha kuru. Iti te jnana makhyatam. All right, let's translate this. So Pooja Swamiji's translation. Uh, uh, Guruji, Asheshana you want to mention. Yeah, Asheshana. Okay, yeah, I did mention briefly. Asheshena. Shesha means remaining. Ashesha means not remaining. So, analyze the whole thing without taking anything for granted. I said, I use that word, without taking it for granted. Without leaving anything out. Means 720 shokas are there. 
And uh, these words are not uttered in vain. Every pro particle, every, what do you call it, pronoun, everything is important. Cha, people analyze so much time, they spend analyzing all this cha and tu and all that in the Shastra. Tu, why did this? Krishna says tu? Tu means, is it by-election? Yeah, Jyotanartam, something they will say. To differentiate this from that, like that, you have to identify all that. Because words, that word, the, the word is never uttered in vain. Not a single word is uttered in vain. That's a beautiful culture. I'm not saying we are unique or anything, but wherever, wherever there is a value for knowledge, those words are carefully used, cautiously used. Not a single extra word, nothing less also. Yeah, Bhagya. Uh, Jay Kumar Ji, is that Aseshena, does that go with uh, Aseshena Akyatam or Aseshena Vimrushya? Is he talking about uh, that what was taught by me without leaving anything out or is it you think about it without leaving anything out? The way Shankaracharya explains is think about it without leaving anything out. Okay. And that's why I said don't take anything for granted. <laughs> okay. So, so it's beautiful. I mean, our Shastram gets that status. Nothing. Somebody's right. Commenting on a text means word for word, every word has to be taken, has to be accounted for in our understanding. And that's very beautiful. And sometimes they will say, okay, you have to, Yatha is there, Tatha is not there. Therefore, Tatha has to be supplied. Where should it be supplied? Like that they analyze and help us understand that. Lokas. So it's a beautiful tradition there. All right. So let's translate this. So Asayashena means what? Without leaving anything out. Literally, that's what it means. Let's see what Shanji says here. Thus, the knowledge that is more secret than any secret. Thus, the knowledge. That is more secret than any secret. Was told by me to you. Was told by me to you. Next sentence. Considering this thoroughly, or analyzing this thoroughly, considering this thoroughly, comma, you may do just as you wish. You may do just as you wish. Thus the knowledge that is more secret than any secret was told by me to you. Full so stop. Considering this thoroughly, you may do just as you wish. Full so stop. Which is interesting. For teachers, this is a very good message that Krishna is communicating. Teaching involves communicating an idea or ideas. Okay? Communicating it. Teaching should not involve making a person, other person do something. You see that? Very beautiful. Teaching is supposed to put stuff and make the person think, think. Then the person will automatically do whatever is to be done. I think the forcing the other person to do is not the job of a teacher. And uh, so I, I get that message from this shloka. <clears throat> Mahalaya, this shloka reminds me of 4-1. Uh, 4-1. Four, one. Four, one. Four, one. Ah, four, one is uh, Imam Vivasvate Yogam Proktavan. <laughs> and why does it remind you? Ra Anmyo. Rahasya. Oh, Rahasya. Oh, Rahasya Meta Duttamam. Yeah, exactly. Rahasyam, yeah, we saw Rahasyam. Somewhere else also it comes, I think. Correct. All right, let's do the next look. Huh? <clears throat> so, 
सर्वगुह्यतम भूय सर्वगुह्यतम भूय सर्वगुह्यतम भूय शृणु मे परम वच शृणु मे परम वच इष्टि मे दृढ़ी इष्टि मे दृढ़ी तथो वक्षा ते हित तथो वक्षा ते हित सर्वगुह्यतम भूय सर्वगुह्यतम भूय शृणु मे परम वच शृणु मे परम वच इष्टि मे दृढ़ी इष्टि मे दृढ़ी तथो वक्षा ते हित तथो वक्षा ते हित एवरीथिंग इज सेड 63 इति ते ज्ञान वाक्यात दस एवरीथिंग वाज टोल्ड टू यू सडनली ही से श्रुणु श्रुणु मींस आई थिंक यू नो व्हाट इट इज श्रुणु मींस प्लीज लिसन टू मी लिसन टू मी मींस अगेन इज गोइंग ऑन is krishna a little afraid that arjuna may make the wrong decision after all this and he could have made the wrong decision long before itself we should need not have wasted all this time and uh, what is krishna thinking now you know and so once again i'll summarize this bhagavad gita <laughs> so vakshya i am going to tell you listen i have some more things to tell you okay and buya ha shrunu listen to me once again i don't know what once again listen means another 18 chapter is going to come or what we don't know that's what arjuna must be thinking i think and so buya ha means puna ha once again shrunu listen to me again okay me paramam vacha ha my words vacha ha my words paramam vacha the 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 greatest words paramam uh, pure words most beneficial words paramam you can interpret these things because greatest means what is greatest what is the greatest word if it's useful to me then i can accept that it is great really helps me so because it takes me to shreyas therefore krishna can say paramam vachaha and so those golden words if you want to say प्रकृष्टम वाक्यम प्रकृष्टम वाक्यम मीन्स ग्रेटेस्ट वर्ड्स ग्रेटेस्ट टीचिंग परम बच बट हियर नॉट टीचिंग वर्ड्स आई एम गोइंग टू से फ्यू थिंग्स राइट व्हिच इज व्हिच इज सर्व गुह्यतम अगेन ही इज ब्रिंगिंग दैट वर्ड गुह्यम व्हिच इज द ग्रेटेस्ट सीक्रेट ऑफ ऑल सर्व गुह्यतम एंड देन It has some anxiety. Uh, yeah, so can you unmute yourself? Sorry, uh, this is reminding us of ten point one. Bhuya eva mahabaho shrunu me paramam vacha yate ham priya mana ya vakshami ita kamya ya. You, you you people are getting pretty good now. I mean. <laughs> They are connecting left and right, so that's very good. Yeah, Bhuya Eva starts from Bhuya House. Shrunu also, and uh, Paramam also Vacha is there. Yeah, Paramam Vacha. Yes. Shrunu me Paramam Vacha. Itte the first sentence is almost like a copy of this. Good the one. next next shloka is also a repetition, almost okay. of nine thirty five. Okay, we'll come to that. In fact, just now only I was uh, transcribing and uh, correcting that uh, in the revision of the Bhashya today morning. <laughs> okay. So, Sarva Gokhya Tamam, 
ishtosime why should i do this already the veda sara i talked about now am i suppose uh, it looks like he's summarizing the summary sara sara ha swami ji says sara sara ha is coming next okay why should i do this ishtosi you are ishtaha to me ishtaha means you are dear to me you are dear to me where does it come you are dear to me ಯೋಗ್ರೈಟ್ಸ್ವರೆ ಯೋಗ ಪ್ರೋಕ್ತ ಪುರಾತನ ಭಕ್ತೋಸಿ ಮೇ ಸಖಾಚೇತಿ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಭಕ್ತ ಯು ಆರ್ ಮೈ ಫ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸಖಾ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಇಷ್ಟ ಅಂಡ್ ವೆರಿ ಬಿಲೌಡ್ ದೃಢಂ ಇಷ್ಟ ದೃಢಂ ಗೋಸ್ ವಿತ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಲಾಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಆರ್ ಇಷ್ಟ ಟು ಮೀ ಬಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ವೆರಿ ಡಿಯರ್ ಟು ಮೀ because you have figured out that i know something krishna is a guy who knows something and i have to know what krishna knows so that means you come pretty close everybody is carried away by your magic but you only you realize that all this magic is only magic i want to know the real thing and so you have done tameva sharanam gacha everything you picked up and so iti ಬೆನಿಫಿಟ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಷಷ್ಟಿ ಗುಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಯು ಕ್ಯಾನ್ ಸೇ ಯು ಆರ್ ಗುಡ್ i'll tell you what tell you what is good for you is the best way to translate that okay let's translate this this nothing more to say on this shloka again listen to my ultimate statement ultimate statement so i was found is translating shankara's word shankara is saying vakyam shankara said that yeah prakrishtam vakyam he said so my ultimate statement again listen to my ultimate statement which is the most secret of all next sentence you are definitely beloved to me don't stop therefore i will tell you what is good again listen to my ultimate statement which is the most secret of all you are definitely beloved to me therefore i will tell you what is good yeah next to lord <clears throat> manmana bhava mat bhakta ha manmana bhava mat bhakta ha ಮಧ್ಯಜೀ ಮಾಂ ನಮಸ್ಕುರು ಮಧ್ಯಜೀ ಮಾಂ ನಮಸ್ಕುರು ಮಾಮೇ ವೈಶ್ಯಸಿ ಸತ್ಯಂತೆ ಮಾಮೇ ವೈಶ್ಯಸಿ ಸತ್ಯಂತೆ 
प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे मनमना भव मत भक्ता मनमना भव मत भक्ता मध्याजी माम नमस्कुरु मध्याजी माम नमस्कुरु मामे वैश्यसि सत्यंते मामे वैश्यसि सत्यंते प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे प्रतिजाने प्रियोसी मे प्रियोसी मे नेक्स्ट लोग का सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य मामे कम शरणम् व्रज माम ये कम शरणम् व्रज अहंत्वा सर्वपापे भ्यह अहंत्वा सर्वपापे भ्यह मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचह मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचह सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य सर्वधर्मान परित्यज्य मामे कम शरणम् व्रज मामे कम शरणम् व्रज अहंत्वा सर्वपापे भ्यह अहंत्वा सर्वपापे भ्यह मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचह मोक्षयिष्यामि माशुचह सो दिस टू आर दी summary statements of the Bhagavad Gita. 66 is really the last, last teaching sloka. And so, 65, Krishna summarizes Karma Yoga and 66, Jnana Yoga. So, these two slokas can be memorized by us. <coughs> Manmana Bhava. So, Lakshmiji, what's... This uh, 9.34, the last shloka. Uh -huh. Same. Manmana bhava madbhaktaha madhyaji maam namaskuru maame vaishyasi yuktvaiva atmanam madparayana. Correct. 34. 934 or 35. Yeah, correct. Correct. We saw it in the ninth chapter also. <clears throat> so this is what Swami calls it, Veda Sara Sara. Not just Veda Sara. The Sara of the Sara is called Sara Sara. And so it's good, very important shlokas. <clears throat> Again, Karma Yoga, Jnana Yoga. It's a, it's a recap of that. Can, we can understand our own words also. Karma Yoga, religious versus life versus Jnana Yoga, spiritual life. So now we can understand what is the difference between religion and spirituality. Popular question is there. What is the difference if you say? Hey, the difference will become clear only if I understand that there is something called spirituality if only when I understand that there is something called Atma, which is so important for me to know, which I don't know, and it is important for me to know. Until I come to that point, the difference between religion and spirituality will not be that clear. And once the goal is clearer, Puja, Bhajanam, all this is going on. Okay, Prarthana, uh, uh, you know, Parayanam, Japa, Jhanam, everything is there. People do all that. So they are all religious people. We call them religious. Spiritual means you have to dig a little. Dig a little. So, what's the goal? What is the purpose of your religious life? Are you clear about that? So that clarity and all will what is what makes one spiritual. In fact, spirit, spirit refers to the self also, I think. I don't know if the, I can say that, but sometimes they, the spirit, you know, the jiva is there inside. So, Unless I come to the jiva, I don't become spiritual. So, religious lifestyle, karma yoga. We can simply put in our own, for our own understanding. <coughs> and then, which involves, uh, Indians are all religious people, they do a lot. They do a lot. Parayanadi, it's all constantly going on. And you, you get to know, when you look at senior citizens, then you know. You know what all they had done in the past. 
when they were busy and all, they didn't have time for puja and parayan. Then when they become retired and they live a retired life, then the puja parayanam takes on a bigger role in their lives. They spend from 5 in the morning till 8 in the morning, they spend doing chanting various shlokas, Vishnu Sahasranamam, Lalita Sahasranamam, Devi Mahatmyam. Like this is going on and on and on. Three hours they are able to sit doing all this. That means what? It's already they built it up. It's all there in their psyche. Now that they have time, they, they, they nothing else is there to do that is more significant than this. Children have left the home and everything. So they are free. And uh, they are spending a lot of time with Puja Parayana. But some teaching is required. So then therefore, the, so Karma Yoga, then it can be converted. The shift can be made towards Shravanam, Jnana Yoga. Shift has to be made. And so, once the shift is made, then the time that I spend on Puja Parayana, Parayana this should reduce. Because if I don't reduce, I can't spend time with Shravanam. I can't spend. And I have to, of course, reduce other activities. Kame karma and all must be reduced. Eliminated even. No more acquisition mode. This acquisition has to stop sooner or later. And so, that is, that is, that is entrance into Jnana Yoga. Swadhyaya pravachana bhyana pramadita vyam. Taitri Upanishad. Swadhyaya. Swadhyaya can mean Parayanam itself can be Swadhyaya. People consider that itself as Swadhyaya. Okay. Try to Parayanam. But no, here when we say Swadhyaya, we are not referring to Parayanam. We are referring to understanding of the words that you did Parayanam of. Okay. That is what is Swadhyaya. And so self-study, sometimes they say, but we don't say self-study. Self-study is not recommended for Vedanta. <laughs> Self-study is not recommended. We saw why. So, anyway, Adhyayanam. Adhyayanam is important. And Shankara also mentions it. Bhagavad Gita, Kinchida Dita, Ganga Jalalava, Kanika Pita. Where does it come? Bhajagovindam. 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 Bhagavad Gita, Kinchid Adhita. What a word it is. You have to study a little bit of Bhagavad Gita every day. Okay. The, again, he says, Geyam Gita Nama Sahasram. Geyam Sripati Rupa Majasram. So he says, there I said, repeat the same message. Geyam, he says, but means study the Bhagavad Gita. So that is all Adhyayam. Karma Yoga is there, Jnana Yoga. Both have to go. Both have to go hand in hand. For which a parampara is needed. Without a parampara, we will have no exposure to any of this. Why should we chant anything at all? Why is chanting part of our culture? Because it's been coming down all the way. Otherwise, we are not going to chant slokas. Slokas, we won't know. And slowly, mantras, we will come to know. Veda mantras, Sahana Vabutu, we will not. As kids, we don't chant Sahana Vabutu. But later on, only we come to know about this mantra. Purna Madha and all, we don't know anything. We have heard somewhere somebody chanting. Then, then suddenly you enter a classroom and they are chanting. Slowly it grows into us. So, <clears throat> so that's the idea here that Krishna is summarizing in just two shlokas, Manmana, Bhava and Sarva Dharman Parityajya. And Sarva Dharman Parityajya So here the commentary is not that. Gita Shastri. Oh, that's what I thought. What I thought. So the Sarva Dharma and Parityajya is such an important shloka, especially the last shloka of the Bhagavad Gita. Sankaracharya writes. 18 pages of comment. 18 pages. Yeah. Just for your information. So, Siddhanta, Purupaksha Siddhanta is there. So, very elaborate. So, Swami spends a lot of time on this shloka.
Sarva Dharman Parityajya. What shloka comes to your mind now? Not from Bhagavad Gita. Huh? Anyatra Dharmat. Correct. Correct. Anyatra Dharmat. Anyatra Dharmat. What came to my mind? Okay, so we will conclude with this. There is more to discuss on the shloka. That's the overview of this two shlokas, 65 and 66. We'll come back to 65 in the next class. <clears throat> Om Apadam Apahartaram Dataram Sarvasampadam Loka Bhiramam Shri Ramam Bhuyo Bhuyo Namamyaham Kale Varshatu Parjanyaha Prithivi Sasya Shalini Desho Yam Kshobharahitaha Brahmana Santu Nirvayaha Om Purnamadaf Purnamidam Purnath Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om Dhaniwala Guru